going on, Jerome's? Beautiful Thursday morning. It's time for the Vikings Thursday news dump. As you're taking a dump, he sees you when you're pooping. That's right. So, uh, head coach Kevin McConnell uh, announced on Wednesday that Nick Mullins will be starting the se- regular season finale against the Detroit Lions. Uh, Lions, uh, according to Dan Campbell, will be playing starters uh, as they look to slide into the two seed. Vikings still have a three percent chance of making the playoffs uh, uh three games need to go right and then either or of one of two remaining games either way thin chance but uh first and foremost the vikings do have to win and i, I understand the pick uh since the vikings still have some playoff hope left as well as nick mullins i mean for the the turnover worthy plays that he chucks out there which he is a gunslinger i mean he went to southern miss grew up idolizing burt favor all that stuff uh the passing game did look the most efficient uh, with him uh, under center. I mean, Josh Dobbs had his moments and uh, when he was making plays off script, uh, but Kevin O'Connell trying to turn Dobbs into a pocket passer it didn't quite work. And Jaron Hall, I mean, it's so funny. Like, people are calling Jaron Hall a bust. How can a fifth round pick be a bust, man? I don't know, man. But I do think that Jaron Hall still has traits. I think that we still haven't seen enough. I understand why Jaron Hall isn't starting against the Lions because you know, the Vikings still have breath in the lungs. Now, if the Vikings had it completely were eliminated from playoff contention, I, I could see starting Jaron Hall and then not uh, not benching him. Uh, but it's so funny. People who want to write off Jaron Hall for a bad half of football wasn't even like – uh, below average half of football completely ignore the second drive against the Falcons. It's like, it's like you already had your minds made up. Uh, I'm not saying that the kid's going to be the future franchise quarterback. I think that he could develop into something, something, uh, but it's way too early to write him off. I mean, go, go look at Joe Burrow's first season, you know, go look at Troy Aikman, go look at Steve Young's first seasons with the, with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Go ahead. Uh, what, what if uh, fans just wrote them off after a half of football? Okay. Okay. Mm. Uh, but what's been most frustrating about the season is that the Vikings, even with all the injuries, would have, could have, should have this year. Uh, so Brian Knowles put this out. Uh, meanwhile, in a universe not too far from our own, here are the current NFL standings if every one score game was flipped. So, um, you know, Vikings win by a score, that becomes a loss. The Vikings uh, lose by a score, that becomes a win. Uh, oh, looky, looky, here comes Hooky. Vikings end up 11 and 5, staying alive, the two seed. <laughs> Uh, in the NFC, and that's been frustrating, man. I mean, aside from the Packers' debacle, uh, the Vikings have lost uh, a single-score game for every single one of their losses, and it's tough. I mean, it's just really extremely frustrating. Now, you can look on the other sides. Like, the Vikings' only uh, multi-score wins were against the Niners and Packers Week 7 and 8, respectively, because Kirk Cousins was freaking dealing, all, all that stuff, but... I don't know. Like, you know, the Vikings, aside from the second Packers game, could have found ways to win all of these. They're usually turnover or mental error related, but it's just tough. Just tough, man. Also tough is, right, so Josh Mattel is getting snubbed uh, in the Pro Bowl voting by his peers as well as the coaches. Vikes insider. Josh Mattel has led all strong safeties in fan voting. Josh Mattel is named a third al- uh, alternate. Uh, what is the point of fan voting? That's fair. And I, I do feel like uh, – so Buda Baker got voted in uh, as the starter. And Buda's a stud, don't get me wrong, but Buda didn't put up the numbers that Josh Mattel said this year. Uh, Buda didn't put up the numbers that Antoine Winfield Jr. Uh, did this year. Also, we need to get rid of free safety and strong safety designation since dudes generally play both spots. Uh, there isn't, like, a defined Earl Thomas free safety, Cam Chancellor strong safety relationship anymore. It's just stupid. Yeah, but it's you know, numerous Vikings were snubbed. Uh, another guy that maybe could have snuck it. I don't know, but uh, you know JJ probably wasn't going to get in. I mean, the NFC is pretty stacked with wide receivers, but uh, you know, missing seven games, seven and a half games, basically, uh, it's been rough for Justin Jefferson. But uh, he can still salvage a season and still put up a, a one thousand yard year uh, with one hundred eighteen receiving yards against the Lions. Uh, now the Lions, I mean, their secondary is a little bit dinged up, uh, but they are going to be playing to win uh, by all accounts. But it's okay. I mean, JJ with Mullins. I mean, Mullins isn't a rookie. He can operate the offense efficiently. You know, J.J. had a big game uh, against the Lions last time with Mullins under center, so I actually do think that J.J. will get over uh, 1K. Uh, the other receiver, so Jordan Addison. All right, so uh, Nick Penikoff uh, tweeted out uh, you know, a video of Michael Penix Jr. doing some great things again, uh, in the college football playoff, and Michael Penix Jr. had more big-time throws than Caleb Williams during the 2023 season. Uh, Penix had six big-time throws against Texas. I think he had like 39 total for the season. And Williams, I mean, Williams struggled this year. And you know, we pointed out, hey, 
Williams with Jordan Addison good, Williams with Jordan Addison bad. Hmm. And Jordan Addison made Caleb Williams and Kenny Pickett. And we just we all put this in there because <laughs> it, it, it's so funny. So uh, on the old Twitter machine, a lot of um, like parents follow the the show account, and uh, Addison's dad retweeted this. <laughs> It's so funny, man, because, uh, you know, we do have a license to talk ish at times, but generally us being uh, of the purple positivity ilk, I feel like that's more up the the parents lane in terms of rabbit ears media that they want to pay attention to. It's awesome, man. But I mean, I got a point because Jordan Addison at Pitt, when he won the Blitnikoff Award, basically turned Kenny Pick into a first round pick. How's that working out? Uh, and then... Uh, again, it's night and day. Like Caleb Williams was fine as a freshman at Oklahoma, but you didn't have Jordan Addison. Get Jordan Addison win the Heisman. Without Jordan Addison, you're just above 500. And also, your your backup quarterback looks fantastic in the bowl game, man. So I don't know what to tell you. Hmm. Uh, something I will say is that I would love Brian Flores to be back, even though the defense has been asked thank you since the fourth quarter of the Bengals game. But uh, Flores talked about his time here in Minnesota. Uh, Kevin Seifert, ESPN, who's not Carl Gerbschmidt, Flores today, quote, I would say already, and I told our players, this has been one of the most rewarding, most fun seasons that I've been a part of, uh, says the defense is a great group, notes that he himself has evolved and done some things that are out of my comfort zone. I wonder what, what is out, out of his comfort zone. I don't know, like uh, I don't know, losing games on purpose for 100, 100 dimes. Is that out of the comfort zone? Nah, just playing. But I, I do think that Flores, you know, despite the sort of collapse of the defense the last couple of games, and you could blame injuries, even though, I mean, it's it's part of the game. But I, I do think that Flores deserves a shot at a head coaching gig again. Uh, but also, I don't want him just to take a job just to take a job because, I mean, you saw what happened with the Dolphins. And Flores deserves to have a spot where he's got stable ownership and he and the GM are on the same page. Otherwise, it's just going to be a disaster again. But if you can't find that, and also some teams may hold his lawsuit against him, I think that Flores could be back uh, with the Vikings next year. Selfishly, I would love that. Uh, also, I would love if he gets some upgrades in personnel. The Vikings actually go hard on the paint on the, the defense, especially the defensive line. So, I mean, that's the Vikings' needs right now. Quarterback of the future, especially in this class. Defensive line is huge. Cornerback is huge. Offensive line is huge. Go get it. That's right, man. Uh, also huge is the Vikings rating. So uh, th this is uh, – so in red it are uh, the areas that uh, the local Fox affiliate is going to be carrying the Vikings-Lions uh, game at noon Central Time, which is the only time zone that matters. So basically C to, sign, C to Shining C, you got like the D.C. area, you got all the Midwest – got Texas, uh, you got all the West, you got all the Pacific, you got all of California. Everyone's watching us. All eyes on us, which I don't know if that would be good or bad. <laughs> but I, I understand. It's like, well, if the Vikings lose, they, they could improve their draft pick slightly. Yeah, I know. But also, F the Lions, F your face, F everything. And also, the Vikings still have a th thin chance to win the playoffs. Although, it would be the Vikings' luck where – so they, they need the Packers to lose, the Seahawks to lose, and either the Saints or the Bucks to lose. One of the two, right? Um, pretty sure that's correct. Doesn't matter if I'm not uh, correct. But you know what will happen is that – so this is essentially a four-leg parlay, and the Vikings will hit three legs of it, but then they'll lose the Lions. <laughs> that's exactly how it's going to go. Yeah, it happens. Speaking of the Lions, so uh, a uh, billboard in the Detroit area – Decker reported 11 to 5, crossed off 12 and 4. Whatever. Whatever, man. Hey, if you want to complain about officiating, how about uh, that one drive in the middle of the Vikings Lions game where your guys' ass got dragged down the field and also a scoop and score got nullified? Hmm. Or not even pointed out that they literally called the tripping penalty on Aiden Hutchinson against the Cowboys tight end, which was so that would have ended the game. And the whole 75-yard touchdown and the 17 two-point tries w would have been nullified. Now, initially, you know, when it just happened, it, it looked like the officials just completely screwed up. And I was even of the minds like, hey, even though F the Lions right in the face, I mean, the Lions got screwed there. And frankly, the Lions were the better team on Saturday night. Uh, but also, 
as more information comes out, more angles of you know Decker and the other offensive linemen and Dan Skipper all going to the referee to report, and also you know just trying to play a shell game a, a little bit, uh, make the the Dallas defense think about oh who was eligible, even though literally over the PA. They announce who's eligible, and then the defense, if they're doing their job right, uh, they they check with and communicate with their other defenders. This guy's eligible. This guy's eligible. This guy's not. This guy's blah blah blah. And also, uh, it doesn't matter since they lined up in a legal formation anyway. But other than that, I mean, don't let facts get in the way of a good narrative. <laughs> there you go. Oh, speak, speaking of facts, so on the show, like you guys know, like I have a soft spot for Justin Fields. I think that he was a good college quarterback. I think that he could be something in the NFL. Uh, he just needs to have a perfect situation around him. Uh, but also, I mean, Fields got jokes. Fields pretty funny, man. So uh, my sports update. Uh, Bears quarterback Justin Fields on playing in Green Bay this week. Quote, their fans are going to be loud because there's not much to do in Green Bay except watch football. End quote. <laughs> I mean... I feel like during the winter, even though winter is pretty mild this year, uh, in a Midwestern city, that there really isn't much to do. And even being here in the in the great state of Minnesota, in the Twin Cities, I mean, when it's really cold or really snowy, I mean, just watching sports and you know the NBA is back, college basketball is back as well. Uh, you got the office set up, got multiple TVs, YouTube TV lets you put four games on at once, uh, a couple of jelly beans down, monitoring the games, nothing better. Mm. Also, yeah, yeah, if you partake, uh, having a, uh, a drinky poo or two, and if you have um, significant others or significant buddies just hanging out, you know what I mean? So that's all you need to do in the winter. Uh, speaking of <laughs> hanging out with significant others, so uh, jump at Joe Flacco, who's certainly up there in age. You know, I think he's 38, 39. Doesn't matter. But. Uh, <laughs> So it, it is a story. What's amazing, too, is that he's being rested for the playoffs. I mean, the Browns are, are uh, locked in. So they're just uh, like they're trotting out um, Jeff Driscoll <laughs> with P.J. Walker backing it up. So the rest in, uh, they are resting Joe Flacco for the playoffs, which I love, man. Uh, and Flacco who's embracing his oldness. He said this, quote, if I messed up in high school, I could be these kids' dads, uh, referencing his teammates. <laughs> Uh, so he's in his late 30s, and I mean, some of these kids in the league are 21, 22. It's like, yeah, I mean, I mean, if you screwed up in Delaware, I mean, probably could have a kid or two. I mean, Joe Flacco the second, JF two, launching, uh, you know, committing and uh, you know, committing in college, entering the transfer portal, uh, hopping into the league, all that stuff. It's so hilarious, man. But all right, so the fact that Joe Flacco can do it at this age. Even though he was sort of asked, thank you, the last couple of years. It's just like, man, if the Vikings let go of Kirk Cousins, could Kirk just randomly pop up and be a backup and then all of a sudden rise up and, and lead a charge? I think it's possible. Let, let's pick a random team to do it as well. So how about how about the Raiders? But the Raiders trade up for their quarterback of the future this year. And the Vikings signed Kirk for two a two year deal. The Vikings also get their quarterback the future. You know they let go of Kirk after one year because Michael Penix is ready to rock and roll. Uh, and then Kirk you know signs to be a backup somewhere or a bridge quarterback. A couple years go by, uh, and the Raiders quarterback goes down with injury, and there's a couple other injuries, and then all of a sudden Kirk is like, I'm in. Forty two year old Kirk Cousins, get it done, man. I would love to see it. Uh, but that's it. That's uh, Vikings Thursday news dump. Uh, you guys are the best. You know to do skull production value.